Well, hello everybody. <laughs> I've got a bit of a job on today. Um, <clears throat> I was working. I was working in the forest, <clears throat> and I got my trusty, trusty old still MS two thirty trapped in a um, trapped in a cut. And when I released, when I released it using my other saw, it fell out of the cut. Dropping a two foot deep muddy trench, and this is the result. And what a mess! Um, <laughs> okay, so what am I going to do with this? The, well, I was just going to clean it, but I, I did realize pretty quickly that I've actually been trying to free it with my other saw, I've actually hit the chain brake handle. Now that's bad news. Um, this thing, it's a safety critical feature. So, what I thought I'd do would be strip this thing down as far as I can, give it a clean, and then probably doesn't need a clean, replace the chain brake handle with a new chain brake handle. I'm also going to treat this thing to a um, a new sprocket because that must be worn by now. I'm going to uh, I'm going to dress the bar, check the spark plug, that sort of thing, clean the filter. Um, normally, what I would do when I when I begin to work on a saw is that I'll just attack it with the um, with the compressor. Lost some of the rubbish off, but to be honest with you, there's so much. Um, Exhaust is also a bit loose. I'm going to fix that. There is so much muck and rubbish in this thing that what I'm going to do actually is I'm just going to dismantle it and I'm just going to put it in some soap and water. And I'm going to scrub it good old fashioned low technology. Okay, let's get going with that. I must admit I'm. Uh, <laughs> I'm a little bit anxious about what I'm actually going to find. I do love this saw. It must be, oh God, this must be what? 10 years old? I did actually, um, I did actually modify this. Had one of those, um, which at the time were pretty awful, still easy chain tension systems. Other than a big, a big wheel that flips up and you, you turn the wheel at tension and then you lock it down. And I don't know what they're like now, but in the early days, they were not very good. Um, they kept slipping, so I actually um, bought some replacement uh, parts and I removed that I removed that whole system and I replaced it with a traditional uh, chain tension system. Um, if you look on the forestry forum, the uh, United States Forestry Forum, there are guys there who do this if you want to do that yourself. and and replace the easy chain tensioning system with a traditional one. Um, you can find the part numbers on the forestry forum. Okay, let's see what we're going to find here. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. That's not good. Yeah, I'm not going to blast that out with a compressor. That's going to get washed. <laughs> okay, I'm going to find something to put this on. I've actually, I've actually put this into a into a box and I've come indoors today because um, it's just too cold outside and I need to be able to see what I'm doing. Okay, so yeah, wow, that's not good. Mud is not known for its lubrication properties. Yeah, was that? Chain brake off. The um the chain brake. You might look at that and think, oh, you know, it's not that's not so bad. Um, there's actually a fair old chunk gone from the chain brake. It's my own stupid fault. And one of the ways a chain brake works is that if you suddenly get kicked back on the saw and it flies up, the inertia will cause this to um engage. And of course, inertia relies on the mass of the chain brake handle itself. And we've lost some mass. Um, it's also the case that um, 
if you suddenly get a lot of kickback and it comes up in your hand, your hand will <coughs> pop that on. And if that's weakened, it comes up very fast and very hard, that could snap. So it's a, it, it is a crucial thing to actually replace. So, uh, stupid me. Okay, let's loosen off. The chain tensioner. See if I can get this thing off. And I'll see if I can move that so you get a better view of what's going on. There we go. Yeah, if you're doing domestic work with your chainsaw, you can expect your chainsaw to last years. If you're doing forestry work, oh goodness, if you're doing forestry work, sometimes your chainsaws only last months. And it's usually some, some disaster, some catastrophe which finishes them off. jammed up tight yeah oh that's not good yeah okay that goes into the pot that's getting washed and the chain i may believe it or not be able to salvage this chain it too goes into the pot to get washed At least that hasn't seized up. Soaking wet there. Okay. What I'm going to do, it's wet under there. Mm. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let this dry with chain oil. That's moisture, that's not chain oil. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let this dry. Once it's dried, I can take it outside and get the compressor on it, get some air on it, um, brush off the worst of this. I don't want to be doing too much of that here because you don't want to work this way back in through the exhaust, which we have just seen is slightly loose. Um, and we don't want it working its way into the, into the um, carburetor. We don't want it working its way into a piston housing. So until I get that dried and cleaned off, I'm not going to mess about with the, um, with the spark plug or the air filter. Let's have a quick look to see what the air filter looks like. So to get the back cover off, we put it on the start position, rotate the lock that way. I'm going to put this back on actually, I'm not cleaning this today. Pretty bad. Yeah, that's pretty bad. I'm gonna put that on. We don't want anything falling down there. Interestingly, as well, if you're not aware of this, see this thing here. This is a lot of a lot of people see this but don't know what to do with it. This is um this is something which allows you to work in very cold conditions where the cold air could otherwise freeze up the carburetor. Now, if this is in position, what basically happens is it blocks off the piston housing, the main engine assembly in here. And so when this draws in air, it draws in air from the outside, cool air. It's what you would use in the summer, stop the soil overheating. In the winter, if you remove this, what happens then is the air will be drawn in from around the engine. So it actually draws warm air, warm air into the engine through the filter, and stops the carburetor freezing up. So if you've ever wondered what this is for, that's its purpose. I'm gonna pop that back in there for safekeeping for now. I'm gonna put this back on and I'm gonna put this mess 
somewhere warm and I'm going to let them dry for 24 hours then I'll get the brush and the compressor on it and I will then continue the dismantling process. In the meantime I'm going to get these washed. Okay so let's get cleaning. Now here is a great tip for you. You would think you would think that the best thing to use for um, cleaning mud, etc., grease is this stuff, regular dishwashing liquid. It isn't. The best thing to use are these. Now, this is not caustic soda. This is not the really strong stuff that you need to be careful with. Um, this is quite mild. It's what you, you put into your wash. I don't know what you'd call it um, in the States, but you can pick it up in the cheap shops here in the UK. Um, you don't need a great deal of it. Now I've got gloves on here. You don't particularly need to wear gloves with this. I don't. Um, there's no warning on it saying that it um, causes any skin irritation. The reason I'm putting gloves on is because it leaves a bit of a slippy um, residue. It's also cold today. Now, the reason that soda crystals work is because they are very alkaline and a lot of the muck and rubbish that you clean from chainsaw is tree sap and tree sap is very acidic that's why it works so well regular dishwashing liquid will dissolve some grease but the the soda crystal stuff is much much better okay so first thing in the chain Oh wow, you can almost hear it breathing a, a sigh of relief. I use um, soda crystals to actually clean my chains. I don't use petrol or diesel, anything like that. And it changes the sap to a funny red colour. Okay, put that in there. Now we have this. This fella goes in there as well. You can almost feel him breathing a sigh of relief. And there we have the bar. I'm going to clean one side of the bar first, then I'm going to clean the other. This now has me thinking should I be replacing this bar? Um, on every chainsaw bar, you will find, it's obliterated on this one, you will actually find um, an instruction for how far down the rails can weigh, how much um, gap you can have before you need to replace the bar. This bar is still quite new, believe it or not. Um, it is still within its tolerances, so if I can clean it up and if I can free that nose sprocket wheel, then it's moving already. Then I want to see if I can save it. Okay. Actually, um, I thought I would just very quickly restart the video just to show you how good this um, these sort of crystals are. This is this is literally two minutes, three minutes after I actually put these into solution, and already look how good a job. The sort of crystals are doing at dissolving the grease them up and the rubbish. That's pretty impressive. That damage there, that has been caused when previously a chain snapped on me. Um, also there, I did have to remove the chain guard on this to switch out the, um, the cover and the awful um, self-tensioning chain system gizmo that's still installed on it. Um, that's what that is.
okay. Got that quite clean there compared to what it was like. That's rust, not mud. Just goes to show just how much use this thing gets. What's the old adage? Every time you change your chain, turn the bar. Every five chains, replace your bar. Every two bars, replace your sprocket. Yeah, something like that. I replace things when they're worn out. Okay, this one is filthy now, so I'm going to move this across to a just regular sink full of soapy dish water. Okay, so not bad. Not bad, actually. Um, these have cleaned up really nicely. It's only about 10 minutes since I put them in the, um, in the bowl of um, soda crystals. Give it a scrub, and then wash it up with normal dishwasher soap. Not dishwasher soap, just dishwasher soap. Um, cleaned up nicely. There's a few, some few muddy bits, which, to be honest with you, this thing's going back into action tomorrow, so I'm not too worried about buried in bits of dirt in there. But that's good. And then we've got the bar. Right, now, the nose sprocket has freed off nicely. That's fine. Um, now, when I look down the actual rails... See if you can see this. Let's see if you can see this. Where are we? Where's the camera? In there. There we go. Not bad. You can actually see one rail is higher than the other. It's a, it's a tricky, uh, it's a tricky, tricky thing to show. But trust me, there we go. The left hand rail, as we look at it, is actually higher than the right. There's not a lot of groove damage. Um, when when the rails get too low, um, because the chain actually sits in that groove, what you can find is that the, um, the rails take on an appearance which, instead of looking like that, looks like this. The sort of gouge out a secondary, a secondary groove. Now, okay, well, the other side. Bit of muck. Again. The left hand rail, as I look at it, is slightly higher than the right. Okay, so we need to file those down, get them evened up. The reason this happens is because I am right handed, and it almost always happens. Um, it's just how I could how I put my force on the on the saw. Okay, I've got a bar dresser here. Let's get that nice right angled, even bar depth. Back. Good. Of course, one thing you can't do is um, dress the rails where the uh, where the nose sprocket is. I don't know if you can see there, but um, uh, just, ah, sorry, that's not focusing very well. Um, you will find that you get a lot of um, wear on the rails as they follow the nose sprocket around because you just can't get in there to file them. Not really. Well, you, you can with a round file, but it's a bit of guesswork. This is why we replace bars. They're a, they're a consumable item. We just try and get as much life out of them as we can. Okay, so our bars are now level. They don't have any burrs on them. Well, they won't in the moment. I can just feel Slight, some slight burring. Okay. Let me go down with the file. Take that off. This is the chain. The chain causes the burring. It splays out the sides of the guide rails. Well, 
of it. Okay. The guide rails are level. They have no burrs on them. Okay, so the the guide rails on the bar do wear down over time. They do the bar gets narrow. When it gets too narrow, you need to replace it. But what is too narrow? Well, when you buy a, a steel chainsaw, you get sharpening guides with them. Now, the sharpening guide is much more than just a sharpening guide. In addition to allowing you to set the tooth and rager depth, it um, it has these strange things on the end. Now, most people know that you can use these to clean out the rubbish from your bar. It's a little bit left in there. But what a lot of people don't realise is that these millimetre graduated markings, there we go, these millimetre graduated markings are there to help you decide when the guide rails have worn down too much. Now for this bar, which is a 3-8 inch Pico, I am allowed 5 millimetres. If that bar gets lower than 5 millimetres, then it needs to be replaced. So, let's have a look. Well, that's 5 millimetres there. We want 6. That's good. 1, 2, 4, 5 there. 6. Drive it further along here. 6. Here. Six, seven, oh, off the end there. Let's try here. Five, six. So on that side, we've got six millimeters. This side, six, six, six. Interesting. That on this side, there's slightly more wear. What I've probably done is um, I've taken the bar off and I've neglected to turn it on a couple of occasions and I've actually favoured cutting with uh, with that side. But um, the oil holes are good. Um, there's some there's some grooving on the bar, but it's, it's, it's in a non-chain pressure cutting area, if you know what I mean. The main part of the guide rails are, guide rails are good. The level, the flat, there's no damage to them. The uh, nose wheel is spinning the sprocket wheel is spinning freely this bar still has life in it yet it is good to go i'll also point out that um on the sharpening guides if you're going to buy one wow this light's really bad um come on refocus there you go. Written on the sharpening guide is the chain that it's designed for. So this one's designed for quarter inch pitch, 0.325 of an inch pitch, 3 eighths pitch and 3 eighths pico. The top one here is just designed for a quarter inch pico chain. Um, the difference is um, that, that's for um, setting your cutting tooth depth. And on a quarter inch pico chain, it's obviously a lot narrower than um, than on a three eighths pitch chain. Other than that, they're, they're, they're pretty much identical. Hi everybody, I'm back. I've been chased out of the kitchen and into the workshop. So where were we? Okay, so we had removed Sprocket cover and we'd cleaned it. That's all good. Goes off to one side. We had removed, cleaned, dressed, and uh, did a bit of maintenance on the bar. The bar looks beat up, but that is still good to go. I don't replace things until they need replacing. I don't replace something just because it looks a bit beaten up. So the bar's all good. We decided that we were going to replace the broken chain handle. A chain brake handle with a new chain brake handle. You can actually see here now the um, the damage to the um, 
to the existing handle. My own fault, I put a saw through it because this was trapped in a tree and I had to use another saw to free it and then this fell into a huge mud water puddle and got completely immersed. Fortunately it wasn't running so I don't think it's actually sucked anything into the um, into the uh, cylinders. I have actually been able to start this, the, the engine's fine. There's, there's no rubbish in the cob. We also decided that we were going to replace the old sprocket with a new sprocket. So that's where we're at. We decided to wait until this was all dry, all this horrible caked on mud. It's just absolutely awful. We decided that we were going to brush this off once it was all dry. So I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to go and do that now. Okay, so I've now brushed the worst of that off. Let's continue the process of dismantling. I'm running the the halogen spotlight, um, which is up there. If this is a bit too bright for you, I'm sorry, but the best I can do, given the um, given the short notice with which I was I was chased out here. Okay, so let's continue the breakdown process. Um, what I'm going to do. One thing I noticed was that the um, the exhaust is a bit loose. Um, I was going to take the exhaust off, but I don't want any debris falling into the cylinder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the exhaust in situ for now while I do the rest of the cleaning. I'm going to be dismantling some bits. I'm going to be washing some bits. I'm going to be throwing some bits away. Um, and I'm just going to be using um, engine degreaser on, um, on some of them as well. Okay. Okay, let's start with the chain, the chain bumpers. Um, everybody has one of these. No, not a tiny screwdriver, but a tool which has been with them since they were sort of eight or ten years old. This has been with me my entire life. I don't know where it came from. No matter when I move house, move workshop, this seems to come with me. And it's one of the most useful bits of kit I've got. Okay, let's get these chain bumpers off. That's one. These do actually have a um, have a direction, so when you when you go to put these back on, make sure that you put them on the way they came off. Let's get rid of that. Second one. Okay. I'm now going to take off the the retaining circlip and washout for the sprocket. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit here. Yes, I can. Okay, I'm going to keep my hand on this. If you've ever had a circlip spring across the workshop, you'll know that you will never find it again. So I'm just being very careful. So, circlip, retaining washer. That looks okay. Now we have the sprocket, which should just lift off. This has not been off since it's immersion in the mud. Yeah, you can see a bit of corrosion in there, but that doesn't look too bad. Okay, so this sprocket, let's have a look inside. Okay, it's got the, the usual line of gunk inside that will clean off. Doesn't look too bad, actually. Now, still tell you that these marks here when they reach half a millimeter that's when to replace the sprocket so if i compare the old and the new how close can i get with that you can see that there are actually no marks on the new one these things are cheap enough anyway so we're just going to replace old with new i did also say that i was going to try washing the um the chain in the uh, dishwasher um that didn't work so well. I'm <laughs> just throwing the chain away. Chains are also cheap. Right. Let's see if I can clean that up a bit. I don't necessarily believe in, in washing things unless 
they're really caked up in mud and then a light coating of grease on anything doesn't do it any harm and if it's not actually going to be um, interfering with the function then I don't well, I don't mind leaving a bit of a bit of gunk on things so what I'm, going to do, I'm going to get the compressor on that and I'm going to have a little blast of compressed air That's all that needs really. You don't need to get in this back of showroom standard. Um, of course, what we're looking at here is um, this is the clutch mechanism. I do have a separate video actually showing how this particular clutch, this particular saw works. Um, that's um, that's quite an interesting, interesting thing to see. Um, this of course is your chain tensioner, which if you didn't know, when you tighten it or loosen it, moves that there. to loosen or tighten the chain um, and this here that's where your bar oil comes out of and that's what lubricates your bar always important to make sure that is clear okay that's clean enough that's good enough I'm quite happy the exhaust well We'll leave that in place for now. I'm going to go outside and actually blast off the rest of this with the compressor. Um, I don't want to make too much of a mess in here. One more thing about this saw. One thing I have noticed is that the the recoil starter cover or the, the fan cover is actually cracked. It is actually broken. I um, don't know if you can see the crack there. Can we see that? Can you see it? Not very well. There is actually. Let's hold it a little bit closer. Where are we? Oh, this light is not working very well at all. There you go. You can see it. Yeah, you can see it there. That's actually a crack in the housing there. Um, there is another crack there, which you may or may not be able to see. Um, and there's another crack somewhere else on it that I've spotted. This is not a uh, structural part it's not a pressure part all that will happen when this finally fails is i will go to start this and um it just it, because it will pop out of alignment i'll not be able to actually pull that this is also the still i forget what it's called but it's a it's an easy recoil um starter basically what happens is as you pull it it doesn't actually turn the engine over it stores it and then when you've pulled enough, it will actually release it. There you go. So you can actually, there you go. It, you can actually start this with very little, um, with very little effort. So I'm going, I'm going to leave this in place. It's not going, to, it's not causing any problems. Okay, let's get the compressor on this outside. And we're back. Let's get the filter cover off. In order to get the filter cover off, your um, your position select that needs to be past run, past half choke, and onto full choke. And that'll come off. That's not going, that's not too bad, but it'll go off to get washed. We have our filter. Look at the state of that. That too is going to go off to get washed. But what I'm going to do in the meantime is I'll find some scissors. I'm going to cut off some rag. And I'm going to pop it down there. That will stop any debris getting into the carburetor. A little bit more, I think. If something does get into the carburetor and block it, cleaning a carburetor is not a difficult thing to do. I mean, every, every couple of years I tend to have to place the seals on the carburetor anyway especially with the new E90 fuel even with a fuel stabilizer in there you do need to um you do need to 
um, replace the seals every couple of years. Um, wow, look at all that muck in there. Let's see. Yep, a bit more air required on that. That definitely needs a wash. These are cheap to replace, but again, it's, it's not damaged. Why, uh, why waste money? Just clean it and it'll be good to go. Now, when you look at the, the state of what's going on in here, um, that's pretty manky. But all I'm going to do is blow that off with the um, compressor. The reason being, it has a nice coating of oil on and I don't want that gone. That all looks pretty good. That's actually still quite tight, quite in. That's still intact. The carburetor can sit has work loose because the engine vibrates. One more thing I, I neglected to mention was the, uh, the needle bearing. The needle bearing sits on there and the sprocket sits on top of the needle bearing. Um, still reckon that you do not need to replace these. Um, I'll give it a clean. I might give it a light oiling with some light machine oil and then that'll be that'll be good to go again. Okay first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove this cover here and I need to clean these two star dry holes out so I can get in with the socket. This saw is filthy. I mean, I, I, I do watch, um, I do watch other people's um, videos on how to do various things. And one thing that always, always surprises me is just how, just how clean some people's chainsaws are. Wrong size. Wrong size. Still do, do that's all you want. Still do not standard sizes. So your regular tools don't always fit. You have to zoom out a bit. There we go. This sauce filled me. <laughs> it really is, but it works and it makes me happy. There we go. That's that loose. Gently does it. There we go. Oh. I think I at some point in the past have a broken my long version of this. Never mind. There it comes. Now oh, I'm going to make my life easier. I'm going to do. There we are, extension. Oh God, my hands are tired today. I was climbing yesterday. For our Sergeant's Cherry Reduction. Oh, everything's a bit sore. I am no spring chicken. Things ache. Now, this is going to be interesting. I have never replaced the chain brake on this saw before. I have no idea what's going to happen when I prise this cover off. So let's have a look. Now we see that's jammed in there. There we go. Nice and easy. This one's stuck in there tight. Let's see. Oh, oh, oh. oh dear me. Okay, this is going to require some um, some drastic action. Look at that. Look at that. It still works. It still does what it's supposed to do, but um, dear me. Okay. Okay, 
It's time to get the big guns out. Okay, so you can see what we're dealing with here. <clears throat> it ain't pretty. Now, in order to get access to the actual um, the chain break itself, um, I need access to this circ clip. And this circ clip is totally gunked in, so I'm going to soak this in some engine degreaser for half an hour, clean it up, and then come back and have another go. Okay, so this has soaked for a while, it's softened it a bit. Last thing I need to do is get this spring off. <laughs> oh yeah. Look, look at this. This is the reality. This is the reality of when you work with chainsaws. This is the reality of being a forester, being an arborist. These are not the sort of clean machines that barely get used. These are work these are workhorses. And they get covered in mank and you put in an eight or ten hour day exhaust you don't clean them as much as you should this is just the way that these things work i mean you see people with um lovely clean workshops and everything's all nice and neatly organized but i mean look at this 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 is what i'm dealing with today um it's filthy um it's it's very sort of workaday stuff it ain't pretty it's messy but this is the reality of work with chainsaws on a day-to-day -day business okay right first things first drain some of that rubbish out okay get rid of that my next task is to get this spring off okay see if i can zoom in a little for you there we go i'm destroying my phone screen with the uh, engine degreaser, I'm convinced of that. Let's zoom out a little more. Okay, so let's try with this. Let's try with this. Uh, there we are. Let's give it a pull and see what happens. Nope. Ah, there we go. Okay, now it's important to remember where this goes. This goes in there, and the orientation is as such. That is, oh goodness, oh goodness. Okay, this this is going to get um, probably cleaned up. Where's the other? Where's my other cloth? There it is. Okay, so that's going to go in there. Next thing I need to do now is get this this sir clip off. That is actually a sir clip, although you can't see it. Now, if this little fellow decides to go springing across the workshop, I am in trouble because I will never find that again. Get it clean off. Yeah, the reality of chainsaw maintenance when your saws actually get used. Okay, okay, okay. Come on, careful, careful, careful. Uh, there we are. That's it. Oops, where are we? There. That's it. That actually looks... That's an unusual design, actually. That's a very unusual design. That must be a... That might be a still-only part, actually. A dealer-only part. Okay. Give it a bit of a clean. And then we're getting into it. Change my gloves. New glove. Okay, now you'll see the actual brake handle itself. 
there to access it I need to remove this there's also a part that actually slides into the brake handle if I take where's the new one what if I done with it there it is if I show you the one that's going to replace it you'll see there's actually a um, hole inside into which what you can't see there slides so first thing I'm going to do is I want to free it on the other side there where's my wrench there it is that and that come out together I'm going to put them there that side of the brake handle is now freed let's turn it back over this now is where it starts getting messy now I've, I've replaced the brake handle a couple of times on um, my top handle chainsaws I've replaced it once on the MS150 and I've replaced it once on an MS201 um, I've never done it I've never had to do it with a, um, a rear handle chainsaw so let's see how we get on can you see okay yes you can oh, that came off okay Moving that up. Give that a bit of a clean so I can see what's going on. Now you can see that goes into the handle there. So what I'm going to do actually, I'm going to remove this. And there we go. Now let's see, I should be able to lift all of this in one go. There it goes. Well, I need to be careful, this this is the actual um, brake band which is under tension and shoots around there. So I'm not quite sure what's gonna happen with this when I pop it off, but we shall see. This is real, oops, this is real belt and braces workshop stuff. I think that's just popped off. That there, I think just popped off that pin. You know what, I should have cut through this before I started. I'm gonna make my life so much easier because of this is stopping that lifting off, okay. Okay, let's get a bit more aggressive with it. Can you still see there? What is that? Ooh, hadn't noticed that. Spring there needs to come out. Okay, that is the um, that is the spring which locks the brake handle in place. The the it's sort of a bit of a bit of like a cam over locking spring. Okay, that goes there. I don't think that was actually. Interfering with anything there. One thing I do not want to do is to actually have to take this whole brake spring assembly out. It looks as though I may have to. I don't like forcing anything I'm working on. 
if you've got to force something that you're usually being you're doing something wrong. Okay, let's pop that back onto its pin. What's something here? Aha! Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. If I can get that up in there, I might get a better angle for getting the, the brake band off. Nope, that's not going to work. Nope. Okay, I believe I'm going to have to take the brake band off. Okay, it's, the brake band's starting to move anyway, so I may as well I may as well take it off. It'll give me a chance to clean everything, I suppose. There we go. I haven't really wanted to do this because I didn't be a bugger to get back in. There we go. Okay. Brake band off. I suppose it gives you a chance to to check it. Looks okay. Right now. There we go. That just popped up there and I have no idea how or why. Then well, that that has to come out. Come on. Oh goodness. Goodness. Well, it's filthy, but I've no idea why that was so difficult to get out. That should come out of here. There we go. Old handle. You can uh, you can see the damage there when I ate it <laughs> with my other chainsaw. Okay, I'm going to keep this in the correct orientation, but I'm actually going to give this a good a good clean now. Okay, so I've cleaned this up. Good enough. This here is rather nasty. So I'm going to get the engine degreaser on this and then I'm going to get the steam cleaner on it. Okay, so... Time to start putting the thing back together. I've given this a, a reasonably decent clean out. I mean, it's, it's good enough. This is again. If you're not using your saw every day, it's going to it's it's going to stay reasonably clean. This thing does get used every day. I mean, this this has got hundreds, thousands of hours on it. I don't need this showroom clean. I don't need this fresh off the boat. I need this clean enough to do its to do its thing. And it is. If I really wanted to, I could. Um, I could take the clutch off, but that's a bit of a pain because you've got to you've got to lock the um, the engine, and then you've got to, you've got to get that off, which I think is a oh, clockwise unscrew. Um, I've just cleaned all this out with a compressor, and the, the the rubbish that's come out from behind there, yeah, you don't want to know that. Um, let's start putting this thing back together. Okay, so this is the new chain brake handle, right? I can't remember the order in which I did things. However, it is the case that I do have a record on this video. But because I'm videoing... Right now, I can't actually use that as a reference. Okay, first things first. I believe this sits in there like that. I believe that's how that goes. Okay. If it doesn't, we shall find out. Next thing I'm going to do, clean the actual chain brake band itself. And put that back in. 
However, before I do that, yeah, that was how that went, wasn't it? What else we're playing with here? Got the spring, which came off first, so that goes on last. There's that, which came off early on, so that goes on last. There's a circlip, which came off the part I've just had. And there's also, oh God, where's it going? There it is. <laughs> there's also that washer, which sits on top of the um, that pin, once this is in place. Okay, I think I know what I'm doing. So that lives in there. Just gonna put this on like that now. Just loose. Gonna reconnect the brake band. I wonder if I can do the brake band last actually. I think I can. I think I can put this on last and it's gonna make my life simpler. So Let's get this lined up. There we go. So I can see it's on the pin. It's on the other side. A bit further down, okay. I'm frightened that's actually going to pop on without this in situ, so I'm going to keep that in there. That's on that pin, I can see it. Aha, of course, that spring there which I've just put in is in the way, isn't it? It's not in the way, it's meant to be there. But it is actually... Okay, now I know what I'm doing. That slides in there. Well, oh. <laughs> it's stuck on again. The way it was when I was trying to get it off. That's okay. Let's just prise it up a little so I can. There we go. I can see that moving. There we go. needs to go out of there does it not no of course oops I've just knocked the camera I'm going to zoom in here because I need to show you that the the cam over spring this is so, I'm sorry guys, this is so difficult to show you. The cam over spring, um, which lives down there. You can't even see it. That there you go. That spring there stops the brake handle from popping out. So at the moment, the brake handle is sitting on top of the spring. I need to prise the spring out a little, then the brake handle will pop down.
I really hope this this video comes out. It's been, it's been very useful for me to actually do, and I hope it's useful for you guys. There we go. Oh yes. Right. So what was the next thing? Brake band. Let's zoom back out. Okay, let's get the brake band back on. So I'm going to start off by putting that yeah, in there. Then it's going to go into there. And then that's going to go into there. You know what? You know what? Next time I do this, I'm going to take the brake band off first. That would make my life so much easier. Oh, what do you know it works? Well, it's not even under tension yet. Okay, so that all looks that all looks good. What was the next thing? The next thing was this. Let's give it a clean. Okay. Yeah, clean enough. Now, can anybody remember the way this went on? I believe that went on there like that. It did. It did. And then like that and like that. Hmm. Okay, a quick check of the video I made earlier. Later tells me that this is how this fits on. So that's going to go on there like that. There you go. Yeah, of course. That fits in there. That fits on there before that goes on. Then the circle clip. <laughs> I've got to be very careful here. Yeah? This thing springs off. I am in trouble. Actually, could have done that a bit of a clean, but that's okay. Okay, and then the final thing to go on the spring, which hooks into there, and then hooks into there. Now, let's oops, okay, so. I'm not going to bother cleaning this. It looks happy enough as it is. Nope. Uh, like that helps. I'll put the chain brake on first. There we go. You see what I'm doing there? Come on, come on. Come on. Is that now far enough? Possibly, possibly not. We'll find out. Oh, I Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's it. Okay, let's have a look. Chain break on, chain break off. Oh, that feels better. Just cleaning all the rubbish out of there has actually improved this a lot. Chain break on. Chain break off. Chain break 
on. Off, off, on, off, on. That feels quite, when it's off, that feels quite loose. That's okay. It's meant to be loose because the idea is that if, if the saw suddenly, let's zoom out a bit, if the saw suddenly kicks up on you, um, you don't want a lot of resistance there because the inertia, the theory is the inertia, if you get a kickback that's really powerful, the inertia will pop that on. So you, you don't want this sort of locked in and off position, but you do want locked in and on position. Also, if, if you get a lot of kickback, um, it's got to be free and easy so that if it hits your wrist, it'll go on. So that's okay. A bit loose there. That's all good. And I think... I think that's everything. Okay, so what am I going to do now? What am I going to do now? Um, I'm going to give it a little spray of... This is all okay. I mean, as I said a few times, I don't really, I don't really believe in cleaning the machines back to showroom standard because um, because oil protects them. I mean, this is this hasn't been on in ten years, and everything's still in good nick. Um, yes, I'm aware of the fact that I've just sprayed lubricant WD-40 down there. That will burn off. But remember the purpose of a chain break is to stop the chain from moving to prevent it from moving it's not to actually stop it while it's in motion except in a case of um, an emergency so that's it on this side good that's where it's supposed to be so we have this which will now go back in there get that tightened up I'll tell you what, boys and girls, this has been a bit of a journey for me. I say I've done um, I've done various sprockets and things on various saws, and but the, the only time I've actually replaced the handle has been when I've had to do a top handle saw, and because I'm a climber, I use the top handle saws. A lot more than I use the rear handle saws. Okay, so what's next? What did I say was the next thing I'm going to do? That's right, I said I was going to give it a new, nice new shiny sprocket. Not forgetting the needle bearing. How clean is that? That's not bad. I'm gonna get a little, a little blast out with um, WD-40 just to clean the rest of the rubbish off. Let's pick up some oil. Have some sauce. These generally don't need lubrication. Still don't, uh, don't require it. Um, you'll see that there's a um a key mark on this, and when you put your new sprocket on, and then like oh, chain break, chain break off. That helps. <laughs> Now I put that on, there you go. Once that key is located where it needs to be, you'll know the sprocket's on. If the key does not locate, you'll not be able to get the circlips on here. You'll not be able to get the washer on, you just need to keep rotating it until you find, there you go, until you find where the key goes in. That's all good. Right, what else have we got? What else have we got? We've got the circlip and we have the washer. I'm going to put these on now because I I am a specialist at losing circlips. And if it's in place, then I can't lose it. Come on. And you I would say, yeah. Good tip, actually. Use your... um. We, we call these sparky wrenches. Um, use your sparky wrench to pop your, your circuit on. Now, that 
makes me happy. It's not spotless, but it's safe and it will work. Okay. Next thing, these. These are just chain guides. They're consumable items. Consumable items rather. Um, they're identical. So it doesn't matter which one goes where, but you will find that. But you'll find that they will only go on one way. Note the shape. Give that a little bit of a clean up there. That goes into there. Good. I'm going to give this a little spray with WD-40 because that was engine degreaser and that clean goes with. What's the next thing? Cover. Let me see, that will go. Nope. That needs to come off there so that can go in there. Then that can go back in. Then screws go back in you may wonder what this was um, this was actually a chain catcher which I removed when I put the awful chain when I removed the awful old chain tensioning system and replaced it with um, with the original okay Oh, what I would give for one of these lovely squeaky clean workshops that you see on YouTube. Where everything has a place and everything's in its place. And where people have complete sets of tools, nothing missing, nothing broken. So you can you can probably see the um the the lubricant here and it will be down on there. What I'll do when I start this up the first time I start it is I'll I'll put the chain brake on a few times and run it with the chain brake on. Or the chain brake barely touching. Just to burn off that on so it'll smoke like hell when I first start it up. Okay, so that then is that. Next thing to do, take off. Ah, do you remember? Do you remember I um I talked about what this was for? It has a summer setting and a winter setting. And can you see here? There's a snowflake and there's the sunshine. So it fits. No oh, goodness me, like that, which is. Summer setting, sun to the top, or it fits like that, which is winter setting, which allows warm air from the engine to be drawn into the carburetor. Quite, quite a crappy bit of design that actually. Okay, let's check the spark plug. Come on, off you pop. You know what? That looks perfect. 
Don't know if you guys can see this or not. That is absolutely perfect. Doesn't need gapped. Could probably just leave me clean. Next thing I'm going to do, yes, I'm going to give this a clean. I was going to wash it, but I may as well just use the compressor on it. Come on, that carb. that Okay, this I'm going to leave this on the on the summer setting because we're in the UK. It's not particularly cold here. Let's give the rest of the mechanism a bit of a, a bit of a clean out. That's all I need. You don't need to be. You don't need to be um, getting it squeaky clean. Put it back on. Remember that the position select levers at the bottom for this to go back on. There we are. Right, next thing. Next thing is chain, of course. This, I think, is this is an old chain. I haven't actually got a sharp one to put on, but this is good enough to just check whether or not it runs. Video. I put the chain tensioner right forward. I'm going to move it back a bit. It's going to go on there. I'm going to tighten this just a touch because I want to make sure that the chain's sitting correctly in the sprocket before I put the cover on. It is. Too loose, too loose. Let's tighten up. Too tight, <laughs> too tight. Does that chain break off? Too loose. That's about right. Touch because when I tighten these, that'll nip it up. And there we go. There you have it. How to, How to set the chain break. Let's give it a go. Let's see if it works. I'm going to open the uh, I'm going to open the door so I don't gas myself. Let's move all that out of the way. I'm going to do it 
do this on the floor. doing this all in one shot just so you know I'm not cheating remember the easy start system Okay, so there we go. Long video. Thanks for sticking with me. We um we got through quite a lot there. I hope it's been useful for you. It's certainly been useful for me. The um the next thing I'm gonna do with this saw will be to replace the um recoil start and fan housing. Next video. Thanks a lot guys, remember to like and subscribe.